What's up, everybody? Welcome back inside the Letterman Lounge for a huge edition of the show, Matt. Not going to be the longest show we've ever done, but it's going to be one of the most important ones that I think you and I have done because Ohio State had a nine-star Wednesday. What a day for the Ohio State recruit recruiting process, the Ohio State recruiting machine. Ryan Day, Brian Hartline, Corey Dennis, uh, still talking offensive recruiting because Ohio State is very, very good at that. Uh, Four-star quarterback. Lincoln Kineholes, Keenholes, uh, still working on the name there, Matt, myself yeah. at least. Uh, I think everyone is. Uh, but he's in the class now from uh, South Dakota. And then the big one, you know, you're sitting there sat- Wednesday night. Okay, is there going to be a commitment? Who's it going to be? Jeremiah Smith, the five-star wide receiver from Shamanad Shamana Madonna Prep down in Florida. It's such a fun name to say. I'm glad he committed to Ohio State because now we get to say it more. Nine stars, one Wednesday, Matt. What a big day for Ohio State. Yeah, my uh, my first thing that comes to mind is um, hats off to Corey Dennis and to Brian Hartline for an incredible Wednesday, uh, December 14th for both of them. And, you know, all of the I, – I hate to say it, but I kind of – I kind of feel like the 2024 five-star wide receiver stole the spotlight from – a kid that's going to sign his national letter of intent in six days. Um, and that's truthfully, that's where I want to start is, is with Lincoln uh, really, really quick four-star quarterback out of Pierce, South Dakota. Um, this is a guy that has like rewritten the record books in, in high school football in South Dakota, which uh, yeah, it may, it may not be Florida high school football or Georgia high school football or Ohio or Texas or California or whatever other state that you want to name. But uh, to throw for almost 10,000 yards in, in four years, is pretty impressive. I, I don't know. If, I don't know who you are if you don't think that's impressive. You should probably check yourself before and then rewatch this show if, if you think that's not impressive to, to throw for, you know, almost 10,000 yards as a high school football player. Um this this guy's athletic, uh, a, a big arm. We saw you know a lot of videos of him on on the Twitter dot com machine yesterday of not just him playing football, but you know him pulling up from three and just draining a shot. It's just a good look for the brand there, uh, and a heck of a baseball player as well. I mean, he's an all state three sport athlete, and he just also happens to having a heck of an arm and play quarterback. So I think it's really important to, for a lot of people to know, and I'm going to keep pushing this narrative for as long as I possibly can, that if Ohio state didn't think he was good enough to come to Ohio state, Corey Dennis wouldn't have reached out to him in September when he did. And he wouldn't have flown out to South Dakota during the October bye week to watch him play. And they wouldn't have hosted him on an official visit. You know, Ohio State doesn't take people just to have warm bodies in the class. They take people because they fit in the culture. They fit in what they want to do with with high school prospects. And more, most importantly, it's because they could see them succeeding at Ohio State. And so, you know, I've seen on, on on again on the Twitter machine that, oh, yeah, this kid, he's just a he's just a, a gap. He's just a a bridge between, you know, whoever's going to start, uh, you know, whether it's Kyle McCord or Devin Brown. And, and then they're saying he's just a guy in between this quarterback room right now. And then the five-star 2024 quarterback, Dylan Rayola. And you know what, if that's how you, if that's how someone wants to look at it, I can't change their mind, but uh, he's going to Ohio state for a reason. And I don't think that reason is to just be a placeholder. I think it's because they think that this kid can play. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely think that uh, this is an interesting quarterback class. It was always going to be a tricky position for Ryan day for Corey Dennis for the Ohio state offensive staff to have Devin Brown, the number one overall player, according to on three come into the program in 2022 and already have 2024 five-star number one overall player in the class, according to everyone, Dylan Rayola. It's not an easy position to recruit to anyway because you have to be able to sell when exactly there's going to be playing time. Then you put those two superstars in the 22 and 24 class, and then you say, okay, how does this work in 23? This is going to be an uphill climb. It was an uphill climb. It wasn't easy. Ohio State 
you know, a couple of years ago, I watched uh, Nico Iamaleva, the, the Tennessee commit, five-star kid, throw at Ohio State. You know, we saw different guys come to Ohio State. We thought that Ohio State was going to recruit Dante Moore. We thought that Ohio State was going to, you know, recruit a bunch of quarterbacks. They ended up with either Austin Novosad or Brock Glenn. It ended up being Brock Glenn. When that didn't work out, Ohio State didn't say, okay, we don't need a 23 quarterback. They went to the to the drawing board and and found a really good player uh, in an obscure part of the country that they don't really recruit very often. And so, right. or if ever. And so this was an interesting cycle for uh, Ryan Day. I would say it was probably a challenging cycle compared to many or to most, uh, especially with a guy like Ryan Day. A lot of times there's people beating down the door to try to play quarterback for him. 2023 wasn't the case. So what do you do? You go find a player you think is really good. Washington obviously thought he was good. Schools around the country started to show some interest. Ohio State comes in, convinces him that the situation at Ohio State is better or at least just as likely for him to end up on the field as it is at Washington. And now Ohio State has its quarterback in the class of 2023. is up to 20 commits. And now you're talking about some momentum, somebody to help you try to round out this class particularly on defense on the right note uh you know i don't know how many more there will be in this 23 class maybe three four maybe maybe just two but i do know that the quarterback is a huge part of the game of football i'm not breaking ground there but it's a huge part of the recruiting process and now you've got a week where uh you know maybe maybe lincoln kindles can help you recruit a little bit here down the stretch yeah absolutely uh to quickly touch upon i think I think this 23 class is going to get three more. I think they get three more kids and with, and with 23. And right now it's, it's, it's the number three class in the on three team consensus rankings, which I wrote a story on Monday night that ran Tuesday morning about how uh, Ohio state can crack the top three. And like 20 minutes after that story ran the the rankings updated and Ohio state was in the top three. And I'm like, well, I'm a genius, right? That's how, <laughs> that's how this thing works. But in all seriousness, um, yeah, it, 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 again, it gives you another, you know, another peer recruiter um, in the six days, five days that you have until the early signing period begins on December 21st. Um, and this is no secret. The guys that Ohio State's going after, they don't need a recruiting pitch anymore. Um, those are names, Caleb Downs. They're still going after to flip from Alabama, the five-star safety from Mill Creek. Mateo Ungolele, uh, defensive lineman from St. John Bosco. He knows the pitch. He knows everything that is going to come his way when he comes to Ohio State. Lawrence Central uh, edge rusher, Joshua Mickens from Indianapolis, Indiana. He knows the pitch. Uh, He knows what Ohio State and the opportunities are going to be if he decides to commit. So now Ohio State is just wait and see mode. And this class gets, this class has been, it, it gets some much needed momentum very, very late. And that's what having not just a commit does, but a quarterback commit that can change a lot of things in, in a positive manner for Ohio state. So, uh, and then we're still waiting to hear something on uh, Damon Wilson, the five-star edge out of Venice, Florida. So this buckle up this December 21st is going to hit like a sledgehammer and probably both good and bad ways for Ohio state. I was definitely surprised, Matt. I think I'll be more surprised by the December 21st, but I was definitely surprised as we transition here on the Letterman Lounge to Jeremiah Smith's commitment. Maybe it's just me, but to get a five-star wide receiver in the class, I, I would I would advise anyone who's trying to figure out why this is such a big deal to go look at the on-three player rankings for 2024. Um, currently, there are two names at the very top of that they're both going to be wearing scarlet and gray. That is absolutely absurd to think about, Matt, uh, when you talk about the 2024 player rankings. I I said it on Twitter. I probably should have put it on the message board. I had some family stuff going on. Uh, Here's the deal. Ohio State now has, again, the number one overall player in the country, a quarterback, committed in 2024. Now a number two overall player in the country, a wide receiver, committed 
already. It's December 15th of 2022. So players from around the country are going to be drawn to that. And this isn't, uh, oh, you know, Luke Montgomery is going to be Captain Bucket. He's been great at that. C.J. Hicks is going to lead this class and, and be a guy in Ohio. who's No, these are two guys from as far away from Columbus as you can really get unless you're going to Anchorage to find players and saying, okay, that's what I want to be a part of. Now let's start to bring it inward. And then you also have Ian Moore close to campus. You also have Garrett Stover close to campus where those guys can come at any moment really and be peer recruiters. But to have two guys from around the country, and usually these are guys that you've got to fight for uh, throughout the cycle. But to have two guys from around the country, you know, Dylan's the number one overall player in the country, regardless. Uh, you, it doesn't matter where you look. There are four major recruiting uh, uh, platforms. All four of them have as the number one player. The highest or the lowest ranked Jeremiah Smith is anywhere is number 11, and it's arguably the worst batch of rankings. So... He's a top five player, according to everyone else. And so everyone's going to want to play with these guys. I don't care who you are. You want to talk about KJ Bolden. You want to talk about JoJo Trader. You want to talk about, uh, you know, Bryce West, Aaron Scott, uh, you know, he- defensive tackle like Heaven Brown Schuler, Kingston uh, Bilal Muasa for the linebacker, uh, you know, Jordan Marshall, Stacey Gage, Brian Jackson, whoever you want to talk about. Uh, you know, Micah Hudson, Jeremiah McClellan, the guys that Ohio State is really, really, really in on from around this cycle, offense and defense, you're going to want to see exa- at least what is going on in Columbus. Because when the number, the two best players in America are both coming to Columbus, that's a huge deal. It absolutely is. Um, and I, I think part of the reason why, you know, us here at Letterman Row and, you know, a, a few other of our Ohio State you know, you know, beat writer colleagues have mentioned this as well. I think people are so used to what Brian Hartline has done on the recruiting trail. And that is something that Ohio State fans can never get used to because the better, the more consistently he does what he's been doing ever since he's been at Ohio State as a coach, the more opportunities he's going to get elsewhere. And eventually one of those opportunities is going to force him to leave home. Uh, so the run that he is going on right now to be able to go into South Florida, find talent and j- just pluck them up north is is incredible. But in the case of Jeremiah Smith, uh, you alluded to something that I had written about in my analysis impact of his commitment, which is live on LettermanRoad.com. You should check it out. I'd appreciate it. It'd be pretty cool. Um, that's exactly what Jeremiah Smith's commitment does for Ohio State. It opens the floodgates for this team. I feel like a lot of positions, especially wide receiver, you know, position rooms where you need and want multiple guys to commit. It's always going to be, you know, who's going to be the first one to do it? You know, these kids, you know, they talk to each other. They're not stupid. They talk to each other. They know what's going on. And they say, oh, well, you know, if you commit first, then then I'll commit first. You know, I feel like we saw a little bit of that with uh, with this 23 class. It was a matter of who's going to commit first to to ease the pressure of saying I'm going to Ohio State. Um, and for this 24 class, who better than to shoulder, I get I guess, to shoulder the burden of being the first one in the wide receiver room than the best wide receiver in America, regardless of class. You sit down and you watch the tape, and I don't know who is a better wide receiver than, than Jeremiah Smith. 20, again, 2024 prospect, six foot three, probably six foot four now, uh, a buck 85, buck 90, somewhere in there. The skill set that he has on the field, how polished he already is, again, as a 2024 wide receiver. And then you're telling me that he gets to learn and be in the same room uh as you know name whoever you want that room is ridiculous already but then you're going to have those 23 guys that will had a year of experience and then whoever is going to be in this 24 room with jeremiah smith it's an embarrassment of riches and i'm sure uh the what is it 13 other teams in the big 10 saw that yesterday and they're just like not again crap (laughs) so uh 
yeah, this opens the floodgates for Ohio State. It should anyway. It should open it not just offensively, but defensively as well. You know, you make a great point talking about how, um, you know, good talent recruits good talent. And this is now a situation where it's great talent recruiting great talent. Ohio State has the best quarterback and the best wide receiver in this 24 class. And if if I'm a defensive back, you know, at least my thought process is, hey, you know what? I want to go that this guy isn't he isn't all that. I'm him. He's not him. I'm him. It's the new saying these days, right? Um, and I'm going to Ohio State so I can lock this guy up in practice and you know do whatever now the landscaping of college football recruiting has changed as we have unfortunately had to discuss in you know private shadows and on the record that the landscape of how recruiting gets done has changed for a lot of people so that thought process might be a little old and outdated so put me mark me down as old and outdated at 25 by the way that's me but the point is Talent recruits talent at the end of the day. It's about relationships. Jeremiah Smith obviously and very clearly is comfortable and has the relationship with Brian Hartline, with Ryan Day, with Keenan Bailey, who was a major factor in this recruitment as well. Um, And overall, a nine-star Wednesday is one heck of a day for Ohio State. Yeah, man. Then you look at, you know, just how big this is for Ohio State's class. You know, Marvin Harrison and Emeka Buka will be gone by the time uh, Jeremiah Smith comes to Ohio State. They'll both be juniors. And, uh, you know, they both just had a 1,000 yards as sophomores. Unless something goes incredibly, terribly wrong at Ohio State, both of those guys won't be in the room anymore. Then you look at this 22 class. They're just freshmen. You can't really judge them, but there's four of them. You know, uh, with the 23 class coming in, there's also four of them. How many of those 2022 guys? you see having an impact next year. If they don't have an impact next year, you know, you got to have started to have some conversations. So and in this new era of college football. So all that's to say, it's not going to surprise me if Ohio State goes out and takes three or four more wide receivers. You know, is that Jojo Trader? Is it Micah Hudson, who was rumored to a visit to a visit this fall and didn't make that visit? Is it Milan Graham? Is it Jeremiah McClellan, an underrated receiver that Ohio State really, really likes? Is it a different guy that we're not talking about yet? You know, so it's really early in this cycle, but to have Jeremiah Smith locked in, to have Ian Moore, Garrett Stover, Dylan Rayola, those are the four. And those are like a core four. You know, I look back at this 23 class, your first commitments were Ty Lockwood, who obviously always had his eye in on Tuscaloosa. Uh, you know, even when he was peer recruiting for Ohio State, that off from Alabama came and he was gone like the, like the roadrunner. So, you know, it, it's – that was an interesting one to have as a peer recruiter. But then the rest of your peer recruiters were Luke Montgomery, Josh Padilla, and Austin Sarabelt, Cedric Hawkins, Malik Hartford, Will Smith Jr., really talented players, but they weren't the guys that you were going to expect to, to be able to have the national weight to say, mm-hmm. hey, you're going to come play with me. Well, you've got one in South Florida, which is a recruiting hotbed. Ohio State's always trying to crack, uh, and it's getting even more difficult with the interesting – ways Miami and Florida and and eventually Florida State are going to try to push the envelope in recruiting, Uh, especially considering Alabama and Georgia also go down there and recruit. It's always hard to recruit South Florida. Well, you've got the best player in South Florida locked up now. Arizona is a key cog in the recruiting machine. Arizona and Arizona State both trying to get back into recruiting that state and doing it well. USC is right there. You know, you've got the Alabamas, the Georgias wanted to go out to Arizona. Well, you've got the best player in Arizona now, also the Phoenix area, locked into your class as well. With a year until signing day, I think this 24 class, and we say it every year. I used to talk, uh, you know, good friend of the program, Burm. I used to talk to him about it all the time. You know, this could be the year Ohio State has an one over our class. This could be the year. Oh, this is going to be the year. They could take 29 to 48 guys. It's going to be crazy. They're going to have the number one class. No. I do it every year, Matt, but I'm going to fall in the, into the trap again. With Dylan Rayola and Jeremiah Smith already in, in the fold, with a top 50 offensive tackle already in the fold, with a top 200 linebacker in-state kid already locked down, you're looking at a real possibility that if the spring practice visits go correctly into camp season, Ohio State has every reason to believe it can be the number one class in the 2024 cycle. That all starts – with Dylan Rayola and Jeremiah Smith. 
Yeah, you mentioned the poll of of these big time prospects now peer recruiting. We've seen, I mean, Dylan Real committed to Ohio State in May and hasn't looked back for for as much as we know, has not looked back on his decision committing to Ryan Day and Corey Dennis in Ohio State. So you have that vote of confidence. Jeremiah Smith told uh, on three director of recruiting Chad Simmons that you know he's locked in with Ohio State right now. You know he he might want to take visits elsewhere. He's not going to tell schools no, which is pretty interesting compared to how Ohio State typically has kind of the 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 no visit thing. If if you're committed, you're committed, and committed means something around here. Um, but I think when it's a guy like that, that you, you, you're putting a lot of trust in your relationship right there. And also to, to be not, the, not the pessimist, I guess, maybe not the word. I don't know. You can, you can call me out if this is a bit pessimistic. Um, there's still a, a whole other year before this class, uh, is, is finalized. And if there is anything that we have learned this 23 cycle, it's that anything can happen on any day. One day you feel fine about a kid that's committed to Ohio State. And then the next day, out, out of the class. I mean, look at that July for, look look at that July month for Ohio State, July of 2022. That, that was brutal. And then you have the same thing happen in November with two more decommitments. Um, and so anything can happen. And as exciting as it is right now, which it is, it, it is very exciting. Ohio State has the number one and number two overall players in the country in their 2024 class. And not to mention, you know, one of the best offensive linemen in the cycle and then one of the best in-state Ohio prospects. Um but there, there's a long way to go. There is a long, 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 long way to go before this excitement can be materialized. So I will be interested to see how, because anymore, when you have guys committed, you still have to recruit them. Shoot, you still have to recruit guys that are on your team that are actually enrolled at Ohio State anymore with the existence of the of the transfer portal. So I, I am very intrigued as to how Ohio State is going to continue to recruit the guys that are already in the class. And I'm not worried as much about, you know, a guy like Garrett Stover or Ian Moore. Um, but these these major national prospects that are right now locked in with Ohio State, you know, is that the same case in six months from now, six weeks from now? Um you still got to recruit those guys, even though right now they're yours. So I think that's the biggest challenge for Ohio State now regarding their two five-star pledges. Yeah, I've heard one person call Jeremiah Smith generational. I've seen some very interesting comparisons. Uh, he is everything he's cracked up to be uh, so far through his high school experience. He looks like a lot of um, – the guys that you watch on Sundays looked in high school and maybe even a little better than that. I mean, th these are not comparisons that get thrown around lightly by industry experts, but we see them when it comes to Jeremiah Smith, he is going to be courted by every program in the country. This is, you know, it's always hard to keep a kid from South Florida. That's the common, the common saying is it's always hard to keep a kid from South Florida committed for more than a few months. Um, Ohio state's been able to do it with Brandon Dennis. Ohio state has had no problem keeping Carnell Tate, in the class, even though, you know, kind of from Chicago, kind of from Florida. Um, so now you just, you do what you can and know that you've got Brian Hartline. Uh, yeah. And, you know, that's a, that's a hell of a starter, but he's also a hell of a guy out of the bullpen. So, you know, whenever you need to, uh, Hey, you know, lock him down. Hey, Jeremiah, what are you doing, man? It's like, yeah. who's telling you that? Hey, it's Brian Hartline. If he, if he's not the one telling you that it's Keenan Bailey, who's, an excellent recruiter. I'm excited for Ohio State fans to see what he can do on the trail in 2024. Ohio State, nine stars in one day, Matt. It's a, it was a heck of a day That's for Ohio funny. State. That's heck of funny. a day for Ohio State on the recruiting trail. Just a a masterclass by Ryan Day, by Corey Dennis, by 
Brian Hartline, Keenan Bailey in the mix, um, that entire offensive staff. Have a day, guys. On That Wednesday is going to be remembered well if Lincoln Kine holds four-star quarterback from South Dakota and Jeremiah Smith end up being stars at Ohio State. We're just here to talk about it all in the Letterman Lounge. Come hang out with us. The Letterman Lounge message board is the place to talk about Ohio State football, Ohio State football recruiting. Matt Parker, myself, Andy Backstrom. Maybe maybe we'll finally get Tim May on there, Matt. Oh. Uh, who, who knows? We're gonna keep trying. So I don't I don't know if I don't know if the internet's ready for Tim May to be on a message board. I don't think Tim May's ready for Tim May to be on a message <laughs> board, but we'll be there hanging out. Uh, you can get ten dollars until next August. That's the entire recruiting cycle. Uh, through spring practice, all the visits that come with spring practice, through the June camps. Come hang out with us for $10 nearly the entire year. Uh, give the gift of Letterman Row this holiday season. Uh, I think that's a great thing to do, Matt. But we're going to get out of here on that note. For Matt, I'm Spencer. Thanks for watching the latest Letterman Lounge. As Ohio State goes nine stars in one day. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll see you guys back in the Letterman Lounge soon enough.